who would predict the championship? Us! That's who! It's time for Game Week 10. And we're getting better at this as we go along. And with me to struggle through this week of predictions is my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are you getting on, Mark? I'm good, thanks, mate. Getting better as we go along. You speak for yourself on that one, I think. (laughs) I'm all over the place still. Yeah, well, it's just like Luton, the team that we support. Mm. Mm. Yeah, Mm. we'll talk about them in a bit. (laughs) Yeah, we will, we will. But before we dive in, if you're watching this on YouTube, which of course you are, because this is only released on YouTube, why not subscribe for even more championship content from the OK Football Show? We even updated our pre-season predictions of where every team was going to finish, and we had a lot of fun with it. And why not? Check that out. It's in the description of this video. But let's jump in, shall we? First off the bat, it's Leeds versus Sheffield United. Is this kind of a derby? They're both in Yorkshire, right? I don't think so. I mean, yes, they are both in Yorkshire. Um, So I suppose so, but I I think Leeds have got a much closer one with others. Uh, It's going to be a tough game, though, isn't it? And Leeds love a Friday night fixture. It's two and a bounce. Um, Yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be... It's going to be tight. I don't think it's going to be a goal fest just because um, we've talked about Sheffield United's defending already and Leeds have got are excellent at the back as well. I was tempted to do a 1-0, but I, I couldn't quite bring myself to it. So I've gone Leeds 2, Sheffield United 1, but it's going to be tight. I think Leeds have got just a bit too much going forward and I can't see Sheffield United outscoring Leeds because of them just not putting away all their chances. So... Yeah, a tight one. Um, 2-1 to Leeds for me. So I've gone for a 1-1 draw. I think this is Sheffield United's first big test of their championship credentials. I don't mean championship is in the league. They're doing really well. They haven't conceded in, what, like six games. I mean championship Mm. credentials as in can they win the league? Because if you want to win the league, you've got to do it against these big teams under the lights as well. And I think they will have enough. Um, You know, it's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be unstoppable force meets immovable object, you know, because Sheffield United, they are so tight at the back. But I think 1-1, but I reckon Sheffield United could nick it. But as I said, this is the first step Mm. in in them proving... All the people that say, yeah, well, you know, Sheffield United, they haven't played anyone special yet, but this could be it. Yeah, and and, and while Leeds have probably played more of the, the top end of teams like Burnley as well, I think don't underestimate how hard it is to put any team away in this league too. You know, Leeds have found that themselves, so drawing against teams like Pompey. So, yeah, it's going to be tight. I think we both agree with that. It could go either way, but yeah, Leeds just edging it for me. And from one end of the table to the other, we have Cardiff City and they're hosting Plymouth Argyle. They got a draw, didn't they, in the last game, which um, <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> um, that that was sort of a derby game, wasn't it? Uh, Cardiff-Bristol City. Um, but yeah, I, I think Plymouth going forward have, have really impressed me over the last few years. I think they've started to find their feet. Um, and they're b- clearly buying into Rooney's football which is more than can be said for uh, what happened at Birmingham although there was more to it than that yeah and for that reason I've, I've gone for a win I've gone for a Plymouth 1-0 win um, again I think it'll be quite a tight game but I can't see Cardiff well I, I can't see Cardiff p- picking up points against it, anyone at the moment unless things drastically improve um, and I think Plymouth have started to pick up some real form so yeah Plymouth 1-0 away win for me yeah and I've I've gone for a Plymouth away win as well I've gone 2-1 2-1 to Plymouth because I just I don't see Cardiff getting anything from this game like Plymouth are so dynamic when they attack they have so much attacking talent it's scary yes they are still a little bit shaky at the back under this Wayne Rooney philosophy or is it just defenders you know making errors will Cardiff be able to capitalize on that 
No, no. I don't think Callum Robinson is the the prolific type. So they might nick a goal at home. You know, they should be doing more than nicking a goal. But, you know, I feel they need to get that new manager in so they can sort of start looking up the table rather than propping up the table. But Plymouth have really impressed me. Yeah, they've surprised a few people. I think with Cardiff and the new manager, they've got to get it right as well. I mean, Cardiff have have, have made some errors, I, I would say, it's fair to say, in, in recent managerial history. Both thought Bullet was pretty good. Um, but but there's been a few managers that, that haven't been able to succeed. That could be a Vincent Tang thing rather than a, than a manager problem. But they've got to get this one right because they are circling the drain, aren't they? Yeah, it's really looking that way. It's worrying, you know, having been in the Premier League just five, six years ago, they could be in League One. Although, you know, dropping down from the Prem to League One is not unheard of. It has happened. But, you know, the way they're they're managed off the pitch, Mm. like all these debacles, um, that was a weird way of pronouncing debacle, wasn't it? (laughs) Debacle. Um, (laughs) Vincent Tan just sort of being really Vincent Tanish, like this yeah. Emiliano Sala yeah. thing, where he's just literally flogging a dead horse, trying to yeah. win this court case, and it's embarrassing at the end of the day. And yeah, Cardiff kind of need a reset, don't they? Yeah, they really do. But but a bit like a few clubs, you know, until Vincent Tan leaves um, and is replaced by. Uh, an owner that's probably more focused on on the football on the pitch and more willing to in, in, invest longevity. I, I can't see that happening. Um, you know, it's, it, they're not the only club, but they're definitely one of those that that the owners are, are going to hold them back. Yeah, um, we've delayed the inevitable because obviously <laughs> neither of us wanted to talk about the next fixture: <laughs> Luton versus Watford. I don't know what you mean. Um, <laughs> now, we said we said when we started doing this, we are neutral in this, yeah. aren't we? We're mm-hmm. neutral. We're not acting like Luton Town fans. We are just mm-hmm. neutral. Um, having said that, I will never predict Watford to beat Luton. I will not do it. It goes against the very fabric of my being. Luton Town 3, Watford nil for no justification whatsoever other than Rob Edwards masterclass. He's going to turn it around. Everything's going to change. All in place for Saturday, twelve thirty. We're going to smash them three <laughs> nil. That's that. My my only thing. And a couple of people had mentioned this when we played Watford in our our last season in the Championship with them. When we played the, the reverse at their place, um, there were lots of stuff that, that was happening at Luton. We all know that um, Nathan Jones being tapped up for Southampton and whatnot, but. We were in form at that time. We we're in a run of form, and Watford were bang out of form, and they, you know, they turned us over four 0 So we've got to just hope that we do exactly the the same thing the other way round. Uh, hopefully, the season doesn't end in the opposite way that it did. But yeah, that is that is the hope that I'm going with. You can call it blind faith if you like, but that's the hope I'm going with. Luton three, Watford nil. Okay, I'm going to rationalise my result a little <laughs> bit more. So I've got I've got Luton two, Watford nil. And the reason why I've gone for this is because it has to change. It has to. And this could be the perfect storm that kickstarts the the season for Luton. Because right now, it's not good on the pitch. People are asking questions off the pitch. This is the result that Luton Town need right now to smush everything together. The fans, the players, the manager... Like Rob Edwards looks a broken man, and we'll talk about it in our Luton Town Watford preview that we're going to record. And you know, if if you're interested in our thoughts ahead of a big derby, go check yeah. it out. It's going to be on our YouTube channel, and it the wheel has to turn. It has to because if the players can't get up for this game, considering the players. That have been there for a long time. Pelly's been there for 10 years. Mick yeah. Harford's around at the club. There are club staff, playing staff, that know what this is about. The fans would have known, would have let the players know what this is about. The ownership would have let the players know what this is about. If they can't get up for this, 
then it's going to be a long, hard season and it's going to be battling relegation. So it's 2 nil or bust. It's a win or bust. And if there's a bad reaction, if there's a bad performance, the crowd reaction is going to be awful. Hmm. It's going to be toxic as hell. Yeah, there's a sad sort of mirror image. We'll talk about it more in the preview with um, the Watford game, sort of the the defining moment for where Rob Edwards in that first season in the Championship, and then following that, we we've got Sunderland, arguably the one that that just about beat the Watford game for atmosphere that we didn't think it would be able to happen, and it did in that playoff semi final second leg. We've got both of those fixtures with very different circumstances attached to them coming up. So you're right, make or break for for Edwards in my opinion as well, but. Yeah, I hope we're both right. I, I really do, because I agree with <laughs> what the consequences are if we're not. Well, if you, if you believe it, you can make it your lock of the week. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. <laughs> <laughs> right, on to a team that all Luton fans wish they were. Oxford United <laughs> versus West Brom. It's just that we wish we played like Oxford, really. Yeah. Um, where, where do you sit on this one? Yeah, so I, I deliberated this a bit. West Brom have, have dropped a little bit of form. I mean, look, I've made my feelings about West Brom clear. I think they're great. I love Carlos Corbran. Um, and the same with Des Buckingham and Oxford United as well. I think they're both great teams. I think Oxford are going to edge it. Um, 2-1 I've gone for here, which is against my normal, I always go for West Brom prediction. But I just, mm. I, I don't know. I, I just have a feeling that, that Oxford are going to edge it. They've been, you know, good at home. Um, generally, and I think, you know, West Brom not not been really poor in the last few games, but they've not been putting away the chances as much. So, based on that, two one to Oxford United. We shouldn't be doing these blind. We we should be confirming beforehand because editor editor Kate is going to hate <laughs> the fact that I've also gone for an Oxford win. I've got mm. Oxford one, West Brom nil. I think the West Brom wobble is going to continue just a little bit longer. Yeah, I agree. Because Oxford at home is, you know, they're, I think they've won every game at home, haven't they? Um, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, I think they've only lost away from home and they've drawn their last game away from home. Last two games away from home. Uh, mm. Yeah, Luton and then Pompey. Yeah, yeah, I think Oxford, they know what they're doing. And I think West Brom, are, you know, this is the last game they want coming into so this is the last game they want to come into with a little bit of shaky form and i think oxford will have their number in this that they're, they're going to outfight them it's going to be a hell of a game but it's going to be a very exciting one nil don't think you get one nils there. <laughs> too no. exciting but this will be one of them yeah oxford and the new millwall that's fine. Yeah, they win their games at home and you have to play really well to beat them and, and fight against them as Millwall had sort of made a name for themselves in the championship doing. I feel like it's 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 Oxford now. Yeah, it, it's it's all about that fight and a lot of teams wish they had it. On to the next one. Preston North End versus Coventry. Yeah, <laughs> Coventry 2-0 win um, for me. No, I, I, I know I sort of, I jumped on and off the the bandwagon when it comes to Coventry a few times, um, and a bit like Luton, it's win or bust. I really do feel that way. I feel like, not not necessarily. It's, it's I don't mean it's going to spell the end for Mark Robbins if they if they don't get a result against Preston, but it mm. will start to turn the fan base eventually. They're, they've got a huge amount of ambition and a great squad to go with it, and if they lose against. Preston, who haven't exactly set the league on fire, let's be honest, um, that that's going to be a problem. So for the similar reasons that you said for the Luton Watford, Coventry 2-0, and of course they've got the players to do it, as we've been saying for the last nine games. They do indeed have the players to do it. I've gone Cov 1-0. And it's got to happen. Like yeah. This is 19th versus 20th. You wouldn't have thought that. Preston, they... They struggle to score, whereas Kov don't struggle to score, but they've been quite leaky at the back. They've scored more than Preston. They've conceded more than Preston. Uh, I think Coventry's woes really come from how they are at the back. You know, they, they can score, 
the the problem is they they can't shut out games they can't close them out you know it's it's not like a Luton where you know Luton can't score and they're conceding goals like Cov can score and they're conceding more goals I think Mark Robbins has a few more games in him though um I don't I don't think Doug King is going to lose faith in him just yet there's more there's more to come from him really but I think this is where the corner starts to turn just in time for them to play Luton in two games time. Yeah, of course. course. Yeah, well, worst case scenario, if Cov can't buy a win, they'll get one against Luton. That's always the way. <laughs> you know, charity FC. <laughs> we did it for Preston. <laughs> yeah, we did it for Preston. We did it for QPR. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Anyway, yeah, next fixture. Yeah. Come on. Uh, okay, Blackburn <laughs> Rovers versus Swansea. Oh. Where yeah. are you on this one? Well, Blackburn lost at two last two games, haven't they? Uh, the last one a loss against Plymouth. Um, Swansea, however, I think are, are, are doing really, really well. I, I, I was talking about them in our league predictions. So having said that, you know they've not done brilliantly in their last three either. Um, their form sort of dropped dropped off slightly. I think it's going to be a tight one um but i think unless blackburn can find their scoring feet again i can't see them out midfielding swansea um and that's where i put this game at and so i think Mm -hmm. swansea win on that basis um and i put it as a one nil to swansea as a result so i've gone the other way hooray something that we disagree on Uh, (laughs) i've gone blackburn two swansea one swansea swansea are winless in their last three yeah Blackburn winless in their last two. They lost two on the spin. But I I think this is going to be a tight game. Uh, Both teams overperforming. Well, maybe Swansea aren't overperforming, but they're certainly not scoring many. But they're also not conceding many. Whereas Blackburn, they they score a lot. And I just think Blackburn are going to outscore Swansea in this one. And at the end of the day, that's what you want in a football game, right? It's all about... Scoring more than the opposition while stopping them from scoring. So, yeah, I've gone Blackburn 2, Swansea 1. But I do think Swansea, you know, as you said in the in the updated league prediction video, they're going about their business very well. You know, they, yeah. they've tightened up at the back um, and they look relatively threatening going forwards. Yeah, they're an exciting team. I think their midfield will see them do well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on to Middlesbrough versus Bristol City. Oh my God, how am we supposed to predict this? This is ridiculous. (laughs) Two (laughs) most unpredictable teams. It's crazy. (laughs) I went through about eight different scores. You know, like I just thought I'd just sort of throw darts at the board at one point. Like uh, Borough Borough win one week and lose the next. Bristol City, I think, have drawn their last three. Uh, I'll have to double check now. I said that. You'll be able to tell me though. Um, But generally speaking, it's really difficult to be able to predict a result. I've gone for 2-2 on that basis. They can both score goals, but I can't pick a winner. I really can't. Borough have been failing to take advantage when they're on top. And Bristol City look like, you know, prime Brazil one week and MK Dons the next. So it's pretty difficult to tell where they're going to be. 2-2 for me. Yeah, I don't know where you got Middlesbrough scoring two goals from. Honestly, they need... 100 chances just to score a goal Mm. so i've gone middlesbrough one bristol city nil and we also want to extend our thoughts like all of our thoughts you know we're all dads and you know it's absolutely awful what's happened to liam manning and his family um it's something that i don't really want to think about but you know all our thoughts go out to liam manning and his family at this time yeah, 100%. I mean, if anything demonstrates how much more important other things are than football, it, it is that. And as you said, you know, as both of us are dads ourselves, I mean, that is the the most unthinkable thing that could happen to someone. And yeah, all thoughts and, and, and prayers with the family. It is awful. Hopefully, um, you know, the, the team can um, can do it for him on, on the day as well. Yeah, really awful. I hope so. I, I You know, it's... A- but it is ultimately a tough task going to the of Riverside. Course. And, you know, after that news, like, that, you know, obviously all the players will know 
Liam Manning and his family, you know, it's like, a, you know, an extension of the family spend so much time with the players. I hope they're not too cut up about it. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't think they'll have enough at the Riverside. Um, but yeah, moving on to Millwall versus Derby. Where are you at with that one? I've gone for a tight derby win. I, I already uh, controversially put Millwall quite low down. If you, you haven't seen the video, caught some flat. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Major change usually you. So um, I was quite, I was quite happy to see it shared out for a change. Look, my my issue is it with Millwall is nothing personal. Is essentially that. Um, while they are scoring a few more goals, their defence isn't as strong as a, as a Neil Harris Millwall team. I would expect them to be, and that's the problem. If they, you know, if they if they are still leaking goals, then that is going to be an issue. Um, they're not the strong. Then I, I don't think the den is that is what it was a couple of seasons ago. Um, and I think Derby might pinch it. Derby are a much stronger team at home, admittedly. Um, but I've gone for a 1-0 Derby win for for it. They're just in better form than Millwall at the moment. So Derby are coming off three wins on the bounce, yeah. but punctuated with a win over QPR. Now, most people can beat QPR w- other than Luton right now. Um, and I, I think maybe you were a tad harsh on Millwall. Yes, like that. They're conceding more goals than you'd expect in Neil Harris' side to concede. You'd expect them to be putting up numbers more like a Swansea, you know, score day yeah. conceded six. That that's sort of Neil Harris's signature signature dish. But I think a lot of teams can't live with that direct style of play, you know, long throws into the box, mm-hmm. big balls into the box, and they'll get Tom Bradshaw back eventually. They got Coburn as well. So, you know, I think they will get it 2-1 against Derby. And Derby, this could be like a sort of education on championship football now. Like obviously, they played nine games, but this is where you see if they've really adjusted to the yeah, championship. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, when you got Jake Cooper flying at you like a ballistic missile. I guess we'll, we'll see. I like swear a, they lie about that man's height. He's not. It's, 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 like, it's like WWF, isn't it's it? When ridiculous. the big show were coming, coming in at eight <laughs> foot tall and seven hundred pounds. It's Jake Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> see his shadow looming over the stadium before he lines up for a corner. Yeah, yeah crazy. Maybe maybe they they edit it like um, like they did in Lord of the Rings, like Gandalf, forced perspective. So. So right. here's Jake Cooper. And here's, <laughs> here's everyone else looking like, you know, tiny compared to him. Yeah, he's yeah. massive. He's massive. Yeah. As I've said before, he's 80% neck, though. He is. It's like a good a... neck, though. He gets lots of headers with it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. On to another part of London now. So, QPR versus Pompey. Portsmouth, even. Yeah. Um, I, I struggle to pick a, a winner. Um, I, I, it's more like you know both teams can't lose unless things have changed since we last did this podcast. Um, but if they could, I probably would predict that it's that it's that sort of game. Um, I've I've had to go for a draw for that for that exact reason. I cannot pick a winner out of this. QPR can't buy a win <laughs> uh, apart from at Kenilworth Road, and Portsmouth looked mm. like they were they were on. They were on their easier run after some good results after a very tough start. And, and that sort of soon went by the wayside um, with their uh, drubbing against Stoke. So, yeah, 1-1 one, one for me. I, I, I can't see anyone winning. Yeah, Portsmouth doing the hard stuff easy, the easy stuff hard. <laughs> uh, it's just another one. But, yeah. you know, I can't see Portsmouth winning this because QPR, they, they need a win, don't they? They're on a terrible run of form last five they, they've lost three on the spin they've drawn two as well oh so i've gone qpr to portsmouth one it's time it is time for qpr to get a win and i'm sorry about portsmouth like they're they're still waiting for their first win of the season but i don't see it coming at loftus road which is a tough tough place to go yeah, it is. well it used to be a tough place to go horrible yeah. place to play football Maybe it's not as bad as it once was, but yeah, I just, I don't see Portsmouth going there and getting a result. Don't see it. 
Right, on to Sheffield Wednesday versus Burnley. Yeah, I don't see Sheffield Wednesday getting a result either. I know Burnley um, hadn't got the, the the best results in the last few, um, but I just think they're far too strong for a Sheffield Wednesday side um, at the moment. They've got such pace going forward. They're a brilliant uh, counter-attack inside. And actually, uh, you know, we talked about this before with a couple of Burnley games. You know, Sheffield Wednesday, you might think, well, they're probably not going to go all guns blazing, um, even though they're at home against someone like Burnley. But I think Danny Roll does like to play attacking, pressing football. We, we saw it ourselves at Luton. And I think that's going to be their downfall here because Scott Parker can line up perfectly. We saw that at Luton as well on the first game of the season. And the pace they've got going forward, um, you know... It, even if um, Lafos is injured, um, then they've still got other players that can that can come in. As we, I've already said, Polyosho and players like that that will come in and score. Um, I think that's going to be the downfall of, of Sheffield Wednesday. So two 0 to Burnley for me for that reason. I've gone for a crazy game. Don't ask me where I've come up with this one. I'm just trying to beat the championship <laughs> at its own game. I've gone Sheffield Wednesday two. Burnley 3. I think it's going to be a nuts game. I don't know why. I just had a thought when I was predicting it. And I thought, yeah, I, I could see goals in this one. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a Barry Bannon masterclass. And I think they're going to get undone on the break by Coley Osho. Yeah. But who knows? You know, you can't predict the championship. This could, you know, we could come back to this. And this could be no, no. like this no, prediction. No, no. no, no. no. No, no, no. <laughs> this is going to be prediction of the rounds. Guarantee it. This is going to be a direct hit. Well, you know you what right to now. do with those confident ones. You need to make sure it's your lock of the week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not crazy. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'll, I'll make I'll make the next one my lock of the week. So oh. Stoke City versus Norwich. Stop stealing my ideas. Right, <laughs> fine. Yeah, Norwich 2-0. Um, Stoke... Um, yeah, they, they look like they have perhaps turned a small corner. Obviously, they, they absolutely smashed Portsmouth um, in their penultimate game to the last one and then drew 0-0 with um, Swansea, I think it was, wasn't it? Which is, you know, on paper, a decent decent result as well. Um, and, and maybe they have. Tom Cannon scored four goals in one game and none in the others too. So I, I don't know what to make of him yet and, and whether he's going to be absolutely amazing or they are going to be his only four goals of the season we know he's a good player but he's in a stoke side um that is all over the place norwich on the other hand are absolutely swiping away teams left right and center i i can't predict anything other than a norwich win on this one uh, even though it's stoker at home so yeah two nil norwich for me yeah i i think it's improving for stoke but i think when you're taking baby steps towards getting better, this is the last game you want to mm. come up against. A team that scored 14 goals in their last four games. <sighs> mm. It's mad. They are yeah. the definition of free scoring right now. I've got Norwich 3, Stoke 0. And I, f I feel yeah. bad for Stoke because it did feel like they were turning a corner. You know, it, that, that point against Swansea, it's a good point. Yeah, because Swansea point. can yeah. attack. They can't, Swansea can't really score, but they can attack. You know, they have the talent on the, on the wings. Yeah, poor old Stoke. Maybe better luck next time for them. But you never know if they if they manage to get something out of this game. I think Pella can you know go you know give the old Jose Mourinho <laughs> to everyone. We'll have to see. We'll have to see about that one, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think <laughs> how many games is into the job? Is it ex employers probably won't quite get the shush yet. But yeah, I mean, if they get a result against the most informed team in the league, that is good going. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Get a 1 0 and then Pella can uh, record. So <laughs> okay, football. <laughs> I'm oh, sure he's an avid listener and watching. I'm, I'm sure. sure yeah, why, why wouldn't he tune in? Why wouldn't well, he quite. be a subscriber? And on to our final game. We have Hull City versus Sunderland. Oh, Sunderland fans aren't going to like this. Um, <laughs> I've gone for a Hull win. I know oh. they got smashed in their last game. I don't know where this is. Well, I do know a bit where this has come from. I'm sort of going on the premise that Hull 
I've got to show some some kind of comeback after that game with Norwich. Um, I think that this sort of run is going to see where they end up, whether they're going to be fighting around the playoffs or they're going to end up in mid-table. Um, obviously, it's a tough game. It's a hugely tough game, and, and Sunderland have just managed to somehow get a draw with Leeds. I think they played well in that game, to be fair. But you know, let's let's not gloss over the, <laughs> the reason why they equalised in Meslier's amazing goalkeeping handling skill straight Goal to his own of the net. the season. That was yeah. I mean that 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 takes some doing as well. There's been some goalkeeping howlers and a half this season already. So to win, so to that's that is more now more interesting than goal of the season, isn't it? Like <laughs> which goalkeeper is going to chuck it in their own net? Um, but yeah, look, we've talked about Hull. We know that they're 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 a good side. They've shown inconsistency, but they've also shown an ability to score um, at home as well. Um, we'll see. Sunderland, I've said already in, in the podcast, are probably the most entertaining team to watch in the league. Um, so this could be a very, very wrong prediction. This is sort of my the championship being the championship sort of prediction, if you like. So that's me saying Hull City won Sunderland nil. It will not be my lock of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've gone the other way. I've gone Sunderland 2, Hull 1. And uh, I'm I'm slowly becoming quite a fan of, of Sunderland. Um, I obviously I predicted them really low, thinking at the beginning of the season, yeah, they have such a young team. There's no way they're going to be serious contenders for the playoffs this season. They shut me right up, and they continue to shut me up every single week. And I think they're they're doing really well. I do think they won't be near top spot come the end of the season. But I do think playoffs is a certain, you know, a certainty for them. I really do. And I think with Hull, I don't think they're as good as, you know, as Hull fans are bigging themselves up to be. I still don't know about Tim Water because, you know, those three games, those are three games that they were expected to win. Um, Obviously, you still have to go out and win those games. But then, you know, it's hard to figure it out because they won mm. those three games and then just ran into the steam train that is Norwich. Yeah. yeah. So it's hard. It's hard to really pin one down, but I still am backing Sunderland for this one. Yeah, That makes logical sense. But like you said, the two games that bookend those three wins, you know, were Norwich and Sheffield United and, and both of those teams are going to be very tough for any team to come up against as well. So yeah, it'd be tight. Yeah, could easily go either way. But now it's time for lock of the week. Who you got? You let me go first. <laughs> no, I won't pick the Norwich one. I won't do it to you. Um, I'm going to go Burnley to beat Sheffield Wednesday. Um, I, I really think that, that the way Burnley play on the counter-attack will be the undoing of Sheffield Wednesday away from home. Okay. Um, yeah, as I said before, I'm going for Norwich versus Stoke and now it's all written in the stars that Stoke are going to get a result (laughs) (laughs) wait and see it's going to happen it's going to happen yeah oh well that's us done for this week let us know what your predictions are in the comments we're going to put all the fixtures out in the comments just copy paste put your predictions in there we'd love to see what they are and while you're here like this video, it really helps the channel and subscribe. We're trying so hard to get to 1000 subs and we need your help. So please, if you're not subscribed, just hit that subscribe button. It's free and we give you plenty of content. Hopefully, you know, we don't irritate you with our takes on your teams. But whoever you support, have a great week.